welcome to jasonnewland.com. That's very posh, wasn't it? Jason. Jasonnewland.com. My name is Jason Newland, and this is Relaxation Hypnosis for Stress, Anxiety, and Panic Attacks. Please only listen when you can safely close your eyes. I hope you're well. Happy New Year to everyone. Thank you to all my listeners for listening throughout 2020. And I look forward to continuing the journey during 2021. And hopefully I manage to come up with some useful recordings for you and my wish is that they will be beneficial as well helpful in other words so only listen when you can safely close your eyes it's going to be a relaxation technique and I'll give you kind of the idea behind it I like to sort of, sort of tell you why where my thinking comes from now this is going to involve tapping on your head on your scalp okay and in, in order to relax, so I guess it could be used to reduce a headache. But if I'm honest, I prefer to test it on a headache of my own first before I kind of do that because... I I don't get headaches that often, but when I do, I'll, or if I get kind of a pain, I like to test uh, different hypnotic hypnosis techniques, uh, maybe ones I know of, maybe ones that I've thought of, to see something that may be useful. So I'm not going to I'm not going to say that this would be useful. For headaches, but it might be okay. For the same reason, it would it's useful for relaxing. Now, anyone that's ever had a scalp massage or Indian head massage will be aware that it's lovely. It's really nice. It's 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 nicer when someone else does it for you than if you did it yourself. Um, personally, and I would say the reason for that is because it's human contact, and there's something very healing about having human contact. Uh, I think that. In my society, again, I'm generalising, but it's not a huge amount of uh, that kind of contact, really, um, unless it's intimate, outside of actually going to see a professional therapist that offers those services like massage or Indian head massage or reflexology you know those kinds of things um, the only time that I've ever had my feet massaged would be with a in a romantic setting yeah actually um, I know in some cultures it's you know even like washing of the feet so washing someone's feet and massage in the feet and things like that is actually something that is done uh, as a kind act, you know, to do something nice. 
whether it's for another man, another woman, an adult, a child, whatever. It's, but we don't. I don't have that in my society where I live in uh, this country. So it's very minimal physical contact, less so with the coronavirus. Um, those listening in the future. Um, this is being recorded in 2021 January so you know we'd sort of advise not to go near each other and or to hug and stuff so there's less possibly a lot less physical contact even more much less than before at the moment now it might sound like I'm going off target a little bit with the subject but This, I believe, and I'm not the only one, and science also kind of backs this up, is the healing power of touch from another person. Whether it's a hug, whether it's holding hands, and that's intimate, in a sense. I had a, a hand massage years ago at this it was like a a new age uh, not festival but fair something like that and I had my hand massaged by a therapist and it was lovely but it was also really intimate because I'd never had my hand held for so long outside of a romantic setting when I say romantic setting, I'm talking about like a relationship, you know, a girlfriend. So it's, it felt intimate, but it wasn't intimate like a romantic setting. It was completely different. So I enjoyed it, and it's nice. And I think the energy from the other person came through as well you know there's a healing energy and I don't think that someone would be able to do something like that if they weren't in the right frame of mind I mean I might be wrong but if someone was very angry and very very uh, in a bad state of mind I don't know how what kind of hand massage they'd be able to give. So, again, I'm going into areas that I'm that I might be wrong with. So, but I get a sense with therapies and things like that. Having what well, being a, a ther- I was going to say having been a therapist, I I am a therapist. Um you manage to whatever's going on with you you leave it at the door and you focus on the client or the patient so in this scenario you're your own patient you're your own client and you're your own therapist so you do it all for yourself and the reason I say it now that you know in this situation because if you have somebody that is willing to do this for you then it's definitely worth experimenting with because it's intimate but it's not intrusive it's not it's not uh, it's not sexual it's not it's not intimate as in it's less intimate than holding hands But at the same time, you're sitting there on a chair, you're closing your eyes. So any time that you sit in a room with another person with your eyes closed, you're basically, you're opening yourself up to trust. You're allowing trust to take control 
because you're purposefully making yourself vulnerable. Even though you know you're safe, you're with someone that you, you know, but it's still you close, once you've got your eyes closed, you, you know, you can't, it, there's a vulnerability there, but it's a good vulnerability, it's a healthy vulnerability, because that trust with the other person is so important. It's important that we can have that trust and to build that trust because it's healthy. But anyway, that's a completely different subject. What this is, this technique, and it's as short or as long as you choose it to be. I've already said at the beginning of the recording, it's just tapping your skull. And it's not, you're not tapping meridian points. It's not EFT or TFT. It's not energy work necessarily. It's not focused in that way. You may well be touching meridian points or, you know, but that's not the purpose. You're not touching any part before the next part. It's no continuation dot to dot, one, two, three, four, five, anything like that. This is just randomly tapping on your scalp. And the way I see it, the scalp pretty much starts at the top of your neck. So if you go if you if you go down if you if you move up your neck with your fingers, you can feel where the scalp starts. Because it's hard. That's where the scalp is. And you can feel it behind your ears. The scalp's there. And pretty much above your ears. And in front of your ears. I would move to above the temple. Just above, because the temple's nice and soft. Just above the temple. And you can feel the scalps there. And then as you move down, you move across rather, the scalp moves down to your eyebrows. So that's the part, basically. It's a big area. And of course, on top of your head as well, the part that we would normally like class as the scalp. But the scalp goes all the way down to your eyebrows. And it goes all the way down to the top of your neck. Including around your ears. And let's say just above the temples. So it's like pretty much like wearing a a crash helmet. One of those old fashioned crash, crash helmets that were purposely built to fit around the scalp. Do you know the old the old ones from maybe the the thirties or forties? And you see them, and they're shaped specifically to go across the head and around the ears, or maybe skateboarding helmets. So. They're very, you know, fitted for the scalp specifically because with, you know, doctors and all of us really know that the scalp, what the scalp does, what it's there for, which is to protect your brain. The most important part of your anatomy is the brain. So... Because it controls everything, I mean, that's that's what I mean. I mean, some people could say, well, "What about a heart?" Of course, the heart is, you know, the heart stops, everything stops, doesn't it? That's kind of it, really. The brain, technically, the brain can stop, and the heart can keep going. But that's with medical assistance. 
So the heart can stop, but medical assistance in hospitals, they can keep the heart going or use a ventilator, or I don't know, all kinds of things. So I'm not a doctor. So the brain, the scalp, is protecting the brain. What I find interesting, if you're listening to this, you know, from a headache perspective, the really interesting thing is that the the brain has no nerve endings. There's no pain. You can't have pain in the brain, <laughs> which is really weird. The concept of a headache doesn't even really make sense in a way. Because all you've got is this scalp, which is, is, it's gristle really, is more than bone, but thick, it's very thick, and it's tough as well. I'm not going to do it, and I don't want you to do it, but you, you could... You could hit your head sort of quiet. You could bash it, you know, fairly hard and not hurt, not hurt yourself. As I said, don't do it, and I'm not going to do it myself. But there's a point where it would hurt, and there's a point where it could break and crack. But that takes a heck of a lot of pressure for that to happen. So it's very, very strong and then underneath that, there's liquid where the brain is, you know, and the brain's there, and the brain has no nerve endings, so there's no pain in the brain, can't happen. But it's hard, you know, to relax your body, if you want to relax your hand, it's easy, you can touch your hand and you can relax it quite easily, massage it, massage in your thigh, massage in your chest, your breast, your buttocks, your stomach. If you can reach your feet, I can't, you could, you know, massage your feet. Um, the only part is hard to get to really is the back, as far as like with your hands, you depending on your mobility but I can reach my shoulders most places apart from even my lower back but not my upper back and the middle of the back so I can't reach to massage those parts but you can't reach into your brain to massage the brain not physically so what we use it and what this is is using vibrations rather than physical manipulation uh, without pressing because of your hand so like if your hand feels fine you know you can press quite hard on it yet feel good afterwards a nice pressure on your fingertips a nice, you know, nice massage, and you can press quite hard, provided your hand is well enough to take that. I'm being careful with this because, you know, if someone's got arthritis or an injured hand, then of course you don't, you don't press on it or anything. And I hope that's an obvious thing to say. But with your with your brain, you can't reach in. You can use hypnosis and imagine reaching in with your fingers and massaging the brain. And that's something that I have done in the past in in sessions, relaxation sessions. But what we're going to do here is use a vibration. Okay, so you may feel more relaxed already anyway. Which is nice, you know, it's nice to to feel more relaxed. It's nice to have a break. And if you're used to listening to me, 
you know that it could be not it could be relaxing it could be relaxing to listen because it's it could be a distraction it can be a focus you know focusing on on something different focusing on something useful and healthy so what I'm going to do I'm going to do the exercise now which will take a lot less time than the actual recording has but it's about whether or not or how long you choose to do it for. Now, my suggestion, although I talked about you could do it if you had a headache, possibly it may be useful, but I don't know. Really, I'm not sure, because there's different types of headache. So I'm not going to title this about helping with headaches I'm just going to title it as a you know relaxing your brain so that would be the next thing I'd say don't don't do this if you have issues with your scalp um, I, again I, I like to think that this would be an obvious thing and it wouldn't need to be said but I'll still say it anyway. Um, extreme situations, you know, if you've got a broken, a fractured skull and you're in the process of healing, then of course, you keep your hands away from your head. If you've just, if you've got a brain injury that's fresh or you don't, just, you know, keep away from it. Don't, don't be tapping on your, in your scalp. Um, without medical advice but if you're fine if if your if your head your scalp is all intact no injuries nothing like that then it's fine if if you got a dry scalp dandruff or just a dry scalp whatever then I guess there's a potential this could cause a few more flakes because as you're doing it you might be scraping the scalp a little bit just you know maybe enough to pull a few flakes off so if that's not something that you want then I would you know again maybe don't do it so I'm trying to cover all angles but it's practically impossible to do so. But I just want you to know that I am trying to be as considerate as possible whilst at the same time trying to offer some perhaps new ideas that you may not have tried. So going into the idea of the vibrations, with brain injuries, there's techniques that brain experts use where it's almost like they send an electric current to a specific part of the brain which helps it to heal which is that current is technically vibrations. It's more acute and it's more focused, but it's definitely focused on a specific part and the person is, they get their brain imaged before and after so they can see the results. They have one of those special caps on so they can see how the brain is operating and which parts are um, active and you know which parts are not so active so they do the treatment and they put the cap back on and they 
they can see that certain parts of the brain that they're focused on have changed. So the brain physically changes. The brain can physically heal. So for me, okay, with an intention of focus, the tapping isn't going to be just some random thing that we're going to do for the sake of it. Um, although it, the process is relaxing. Therapeutic, even in the, the in the concept of basically, you're showing yourself some compassion. You're giving yourself some space. You're being kind to yourself. There's an intention there to. Give yourself some relaxation. That in itself, before you even start to physically do anything, can change your state of mind, can, it fills you with more positivity. There's that self esteem that rises, the self love. That becomes more apparent. Because you've been really nice to yourself. And that's something that can arise when you listen to any of my recordings. Because you're... This is for you. You're listening to this for you. Now you could be doing lots of other things. And... You know, if you know my work, you know that I have a tendency of talking. Probably, maybe too much. Maybe. Talk for too long. So you end up, you're giving up some of your time. Half an hour nearly already. Sometimes an hour. You know, um listening to one of my recordings and there's a lot more going on in these recordings than just me uh, saying tap your head you know it's more going on there because not just more in the sense of what I'm saying or the ideas but also more going on in the sense that you value yourself enough to listen to this recording for you, for your well-being, your improving mental health, your relaxation, as opposed to doing something else that is very likely to be a lot more fun, you know, exciting at least. I don't offer excitement never going to offer that that's why I'm single <laughs> I don't offer excitement but I can offer relaxation I can offer sleep I can offer hopefully healing you know self healing that comes not from just doing the technique whatever the technique may be for that specific recording in this case tapping your skull gently but the fact that you're giving yourself that time this time because time is precious and you're spending this time on you which is the best gift you can give yourself is time 
doing something positive. It's also healthy to spend time doing things just for the fun of it as well. So, you know, it's a balance. You need to have fun if you can. You also need, from a health perspective, to be able to spend some time relaxing. And also, from the perspective of tapping your head, the vibrations, it's not potentially just relaxing your brain, which then relaxes your entire body and your mind. But there's that healing, regeneration, That can occur because ultimately every one of us has taken numerous bashes to the head over the years some self-inflicted some accidents but since we were children we have we've we've fallen over we've bashed our heads I bashed my head on ceilings on Every time I get into a car, I seem to bash my head. And every time we do that, it causes damage to the brain. Not severe damage where you end up not being able to function, but it it damages the brain because the brain squishes around and it hits the inside of the scalp. Which is why we have such a thick scalp to protect what is liquid between the brain and the scalp so that there's no serious damage. But still, it gets damaged. But that can heal. And our brains can rewire so that if one part of the brain, even in a serious situation, one part of the brain maybe doesn't work any longer, your brain can rewire so another part of the brain can take over that activity, which confused neuroscientists a few years back when they figured that they'd mapped out the brain. You know, this part is for, uh, you know, the left part of the brain is for the right side of the body. The right side of the brain is for the left side of the body. You know, um, and if someone would have have an accident or something which caused them to be paralyzed on one side of the body. Because let's say the right side was paralyzed because the left side was seriously damaged and then the brain started to rewire and change and that part that was paralysed started to be able to be used again And the neuroscientists, they couldn't, didn't really know what was going on. Because at the time, they didn't have the facilities to look into the brain uh, as easily as they can now. And then they realized that there was much more going on. And the simple fact is the brain, they call it, they say it's plastic. It's not made of plastic. But it's plasticity, which means it's it's changing. It's not set the way that we used to believe. The idea that 
You know, you remember the old saying, you can't teach an old dog new tricks. That might be true of dogs, but not with humans. We never stop learning, ever. And our brain cells do grow. So we never stop. Brain never stops growing, never stops learning. And it adapts to whatever situation there is. It's the most amazing thing. Really is amazing. And I'm not an expert on any of this stuff. I study it, but I'm not an expert. But the simple fact is, the only way that we can reach the brain... Uh, in a kind of a physical way really outside of going to see a specialist that can that has these equipments that can send uh, electricity or uh, you know energy waves into the brain is by doing something like this by tapping your head you can physically have an effect on your brain to relax your brain and there's a million different ways you can relax your brain without any physical movement in fact when you do a relaxation session your brain does become more relaxed as part of the process and when your brain is relaxed your body's relaxed because when you're relaxed your brain doesn't have to do much you know there's not a lot happening everything's on automatic and your brain can relax So what I'm going to do now is I'll put my hands on my scalp. So if you're still awake, because I realise you might have fallen asleep listening to this. I'd just like you to hold your hands on your scalp. Just get in touch with your head and your hands because there's to me that there seems to be a real a healing aspect to our hands and you can move your hands around touching the different parts of the scalp with the palms of your hands I've just touched the back of my scalp with my fingers reaching down to the top of my neck. That feels really nice. That in itself is really relaxing. There's a warmth there. And I suppose that would be kind of the area where the spinal cord moves from your brain down your neck and into your, you know, down your spine. So after just touching your scalp with the palms of your hands for a minute or so, just gently placing them on there. Noticing, it feels really nice actually. It feels warm and relaxing. So what I'm going to do now, and you can do that for as long as you want, of course. 
that in itself is relaxing. But I want to start tapping. So there's the relaxation of the tapping on the scalp, for the scalp itself. And then that vibration can reach into your brain, relax in your brain, and stimulating your brain to heal. So that last part, the stimulate your brain to heal, is for me the intention. Relaxation and healing. That's the intention in my mind as I tap on my scalp. So I'm going to start tapping just with pretty much the four fingers. So I'm leaving the thumb to the side. You can in, you can also do it with your thumb as well. Yeah, why not? Let's do it with a thumb. So all five fingertips or four fingertips in your thumb tip. Just tap in gently on your scalp, moving around. So let's maybe we can start with the forehead, and you can go as Gently or as hard as you choose. And when I say hard, I don't mean hard. I mean, you know, at a level that feels pleasurable and comfortable, calm and relaxing. And there's something I'm noticing already, and you notice it more when you stop doing it. So, Tap your forehead a little bit longer. So now just do it ten more times. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And then move your hands away. And notice the buzzing. More it's like a buzzing uh, feeling, the energy. You can feel the energy in your forehead. I can feel it in my hands as well, actually. And then just keep tapping again. Moving up to the top of the scalp. Maybe moving down towards the ears. Moving back up to the top. Moving down again to the forehead. And then starting to tap at the front of the scalp, above your forehead. And including your forehead at times as well. So that whole front of your scalp from the top down in front of your ears and your forehead down to your eyebrows. And I'm doing it quite quickly. I'm not, not like fast, fast, but just... feels really nice I want to stop for a couple of seconds and notice the feeling in your scalp there's also that energy in my fingertips is there so what I'm going to do is I'm going to press my fingertips together and allow that energy, relaxation, 
to join together and spread up my arms into my shoulders and down my body my chest, stomach and back into my legs all the way down to my feet and the feeling of that almost like a gentle buzzing in my forehead and the front of my scalp really feels nice there's a real lightness to it actually which I can feel in my eyes although I've not focused on my eyes at all during this there's a lightness connected to my eyes and although I feel relaxed I don't actually feel tired but before I started doing this I did feel tired I've got no answer for that one other than maybe as well as relaxing the brain there's, there's I guess it makes sense there's going to be a degree of stimulation to the brain with the vibrations gently moving through the scalp into your brain in all parts not only causes relaxation but maybe something a bit more as we have that the purpose of sending a healing through those vibrations that are caused by our tapping on our scalp Sending that healing into your brain. Now, I'm going to move to the top of the, the head again and then working backwards down, down to the bottom of your scalp. And that whole area between, basically between your ears, the back of your head, between your ears, down to a, the top of your neck. And just moving up to the top of your head again and moving down I don't know why but oh, that's, this is possibly more relaxing than before especially as I get down to the, the top of my neck It can be a little bit awkward physically to do it. So you might just want to do it with just one arm. It feels really nice. And my tapping is very gentle. It's a very gentle tapping. But as I move down, yeah, the sides. So fairly close to my ears that going down to the top of my neck it's almost like there's a pleasurable but it's not like there is actually a pleasurable feeling there on both sides going to just the top of the neck and the top of the neck is very pleasurable just to tap there but I don't want to ignore the rest of the back so I'm going to go back oh, it's really nice actually moving up towards the top just 
tap in. And I'm doing it with just one hand because I find it easier to do it like that when it's the back of my head. When I'm doing the right side, you know, near the right ear, I'm using my right hand. And I'm going to move and do the back of my head, you know, near the left ear and the back of my neck, top of the neck, using my left hand. I'm going to tap on my neck as well, the back of my neck, because the top of my neck feels so nice when I tap it. I'm just going to tap down. I can't go all the way down because my my shoulders won't allow it, but I can tap to kind of the middle of my neck, the middle of the back of my neck. And I'm going to do the right side now. Again, I can do the middle. Just tap it gently. It feels really relaxing. I almost don't want to stop doing it, but I'm going to move. I'm going to move back down to the forehead a bit, down to where the eyebrows are. Tap in there. And this time I'm going to move across either side to my ears. And I'm going to just tap my ears a little bit, just gently. And then tapping around my ears. And then going to the top of my ears and moving up. So we're basically doing the sides of the scalp. And there isn't that much that we haven't already tapped at this point. Because the sides kind of, some of it gets done when you're going down the back. Some of it gets done when you're going down the front and the top. So keep tapping. And that vibration is moving into your brain with the intention of relaxing and healing healing the parts of your brain that require it stimulating your brain to both relax and heal having trust that your brain will know what it needs to do because it always does and in a way by tapping your scalp in this way sending those vibrations with the positive thoughts the positive intention you're actually letting your brain know that you care and you're asking for help and we're just going to finish off by just moving around the different parts of the scalp the top, the front, the back, the side I'm just going to end it just by put by putting my palms of my hands and just letting them drag across my scalp, almost like you're doing your hair. You know, you're making your hair flat. doing the front first now doing the back moving all the way down and 
you can include your ears in this gently and then lastly moving down your face from your scalp all the way down to your eyebrows with your palms facing inwards both together flat on your head moving down over your face gently slowly covering your face gently moving down your eyes your nose your mouth your cheeks and your jaw. And with your fingertips gently moving down your neck, your throat. And one last movement with your hands flat on the top of your head either side of your head your fingers touching almost on the crown you can just hold it there you can almost feel that connection between your palms of your hands and your brain a way to wind down what we're doing and also a way to say thank you to your brain for allowing you to relax deeply and thank you for everything that a brain does for you and lastly putting one hand on your forehead another hand on the back of your head and just holding it there noticing the connection with your brain through the palms of your hand and then just letting go And what we're going to do now is I want you just to hold your palms above your hair just stroking across from the back of your head to the top of your scalp and down to your forehead but you're doing this with your palms of your hand and you're not actually touching your scalp. So maybe you can feel your hair or the ends of your hair as you do this. I'm going to ask you now to move your hand up, your hands up, so you can still move your hands over the area. From your forehead all the way over the top of your head and down to the back of your neck but you're not actually touching your hair or your scalp but there's still an energy there there's still a movement almost feel that as you move your hands around above your head just the movement itself is registered and you can become even more relaxed I 
I think what's important at the end of this is you put your hands together and you allow your hands, your arms and your shoulders to really let go and relax because you've been using them throughout this exercise and although the rest of your body can relax deeply and even though your hands can feel relaxed you've still been using those parts of your body so maybe move your arms out in front of you hands and palms together and just let them gradually float down together towards your lap but only in an automatic way so you're not causing them to fall or to lower but they're just going to do it naturally very gently automatic could even actually you know try and hold them there but they will still automatically fall down gently very slowly and the further they move down the more relaxed your shoulders arms and hands will be until eventually they just land on your thighs completely floppy and relaxed It's up to you how long you choose to decide to sit here feeling completely relaxed. Completely up to you. when you do decide to get up and carry on with the rest of your day you can bring this relaxation with you and every time you hear my voice you can be reminded of how easy you can relax your brain and your body how nice it feels to let go and feel safe and relaxed calm, loose and healthy and that brings us to the end of this recording Remember to be kind to yourself because you deserve to be happy. Lots of love.